it's been seven months and I started to move to Japan. My first day at high school in Japan start tomorrow. I say where my crib. This is the spare bedroom, my bedroom, spare storage area, bathroom. And then down here is, you know, another balcony. And then the lounge room, kitchen, slash dinner area, and the swimming pool. And yeah, the bathroom of this crib. And of course, the garage. Look at this crib in Japan. Hell yeah, and my cars were bought. Oh, hell yeah, I can't believe it. I'm in Japan, it's been seven months, and now I'm here. I'm living here in Japan. My first day at Japan high school is tomorrow. I'm living in Tokyo. Let's watch YouTube, I guess. I tried to explain to her multiple times that she had no reason to be insecure and those girls were nothing more than friends, but it was all in vain. I reached the end of my patience when she yelled at one of my friends when I was not present and asked her to never contact me again. This was beyond ridiculous and unacceptable. I had no other option but to break up with Yuri after that. She was not ready to listen to reason or understand. And I couldn't stand such a relationship anymore. Anyway, that was that. The whole incident. Apparently, oh. does to decrease pleasure. I want increased pleasure. It was quite heartbreaking for sure, but I moved on. And I thought that things were starting to get normal when I started having feelings for this other girl in the college. Her name was Alexis, and we met through a mutual friend. I developed a huge crush on her within a cult. I was happy that he had found love again, and would no longer be lonely. But imagine my surprise when I found out that my stepmother had two daughters, and I knew her daughters beforehand. It gets even better. One was my ex, and the other was my crush. Surprise is a very mild word to describe what I was feeling. I had never thought in my wildest dreams that something like this would happen. Yuri, too, was surprised when she found this out. It was like the most awkward thing ever. When I was dating Yuri, she had mentioned a sister to me, but I never thought that her sister would be in the same college as us. And most importantly, it happened to be the girl that I had a crush on. On the other hand, I couldn't gauge Alexis's reaction. She had stayed quiet through the entire dinner when Dad had introduced us. Next day in college, Alexis had texted me to meet her in the cafeteria. I went to meet her, feeling really nervous for some reason. So, she started jokingly. We're going to be step-siblings, huh? What a bummer. I looked at her in shock. Was she affected by this too? I really liked spending time with you, Theo. She continued, when she saw the confusion on my face. And I was hoping that something more could happen between us. But then this news was dropped on us. I sighed. You're not race you're, you're, you're not related, so may as well. I liked well. a lot, and I was hoping for something more too. Who Alexis cares? Understanding. You're just step sisters and step world, brothers. We can still make things work out, you know. It was easy to understand the implication of her words, but I wasn't too sure if it would be right to have a relationship after becoming step siblings. That's why I didn't say anything to her. There was the problem of Pushy Yuri shit. too. Not. We are family now. I would like to take care of you, she replied. I was about to open my mouth to say something when Alexis appeared in front of us. Theo is right, Yuri, she said with a frown. You can mind your own business. I can take care of it. Then she turned to me. Come downstairs with me, Theo. I will cook you something better. Excuse me? Yuri exclaimed. Who are you to tell me what I should or should not do? Alexis shrugged. 
Um, you can say that Theo and I are going out. Although, it's not official yet, but we like each other, so it's only a matter of time. Yuri gaped at her, while I winced. I wasn't sure that it was the best move on Alexis's part. <laughs> what if Yuri told our parents about this? That's not possible, Yuri protested. Theo loves me. He would never go out with any other girl. Okay, so... I was wrong. Apparently, Yuri's concern was something else, not telling our parents. Yuri, you are delusional, I said. We broke up a long time ago. I don't like you anymore. You are saying that because of her, aren't you? She pointed the finger in Alexis's direction. She has always been manipulative, and this is not the first time she has taken something away from me. I won't let her get away with this again. Okay, now you... If you find it hard to save, bank on savings top up to make it easy. Because every purchase you make with your CUA everyday account... You just sound ridiculous, Alexis told her. Yuri you didn't say anything. Just gave us a glare and walked away. I turned to Alexis. Sorry I never told you that Yuri is my ex-girlfriend. Alexis shook her head. It's okay. I'm just worried that she's still living under the delusion that you two are not completely open. She was right. Yuri had always been like that. Over-possessive and insanely jealous. I don't know what was going to happen when she would see Alexis and me every day. Next day, Yuri came to me with a gift. What is this again? I groaned. She gave me an unnerving smile. I got you a new phone. I raised an eyebrow. I already have a phone, and it works just fine. But it's a really old model, Theo. Yuri shook her head. You should upgrade all your old things now that you're a part of our family. It wouldn't look good for our image if you go on using ancient things. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Yuri. Alexis walked up to us. I have already taken care of Theo's old stuff and replaced them with new ones. What? My jaw dropped open. I quickly rushed to my room to find that, indeed, all my stuff was gone, and everything was new from my phone to the clothes in my wardrobe. What the heck was happening? Both these sisters were driving me insane. They used to fuss over me all day long and tried to outdo each other in giving me presents and stuff. At first, I was really apprehensive because I was not used to it. But as I got more comfortable with the lifestyle, I thought there was no harm in accepting presents from them. They were doing it by their own will, and they weren't going to listen to me. So what was the use of arguing? I might as well enjoy everything. The real headache used to come when they started fighting over me. Yuri was clearly still not over me, and Alexis didn't like this fact. Both of them often got into huge fights because of this, and I usually bore the brunt of this. If things continued at this rate, then I was pretty sure that they were going to take drastic steps in the future, and I was already dreading it. Luckily, halfway through the summer break, when I was going completely insane, I got a call from one of my college friends. She invited me to join a beach ball club. I had to ask for permission from my father, of course, and I can't express how happy I was when he gave me the permission. At least I could get away from my stepsisters, who were driving me crazy. Slowly, but surely. I gave it a lot of thought and came to the conclusion that it was the best to stay away from Alexis. It was doing none of us any good and only ruining more relationships. The best solution for me was to find some other girl who I could date and who was not my family. When I went to the beach ball club on the first day, I realized that I was the only guy there. It sure was awkward at first. But the girls of the club were really catch the game that I was enjoying with the girls and said that they had no idea that I was here. I heard about this beach ball club from one of my friends, so I decided to check it out, Yuri said innocently. I was bored at home, so I decided to tag along with Yuri, Alexa shrugged. I knew better than to believe them, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to start a fight in front of other people. Still, this angered me to no extent. They had taken it too far now. Following and stalking me? They sure were something. Alexis and Yuri wanted to join the game too. Everyone agreed. We were playing in teams, and I made sure to pick the team that was playing against the one Alexis and Yuri were on. Now I had no idea that they would literally take it as a challenge. During the whole time, they kept on breaking rules, used unfair means, and even hit my team members with the ball. Their excuse for everything was, Accident, or, We are new to the game. Blah, blah, blah. I was seriously exhausted and irritated by the time the game was over. I went to a corner and plopped down on the sand. 
One of my friends from the club, Natasha, came to me with a bottle of water. You seem really tired, she remarked, sitting down beside me and handing me the bottle. I sighed. Yeah, I'm really sorry about my stepsister's behavior today. Uh, yeah, they seemed a bit too... Natasha trailed off nervously. I don't know what to say. Are they normally like this, or did you all have a fight over something? I scoffed. This is their normal behavior, and sure, both of them fight all the time. Over me. Natasha gasped. What? Are you sh- I guess what? Pause it. Head to bed. Wake up morning for school. My first day at high school in Japan, Tokyo. Yes, I bought me a piece. Why the fuck not, dude? I'll show you what. Money. Baseball bat. Knives. Some Glocks. And some more money. So, yeah, let's head to bed. Wake up morning for school, I guess. It's 5 a.m. Let's head to school now, I guess. And yes, I got, I bought me another, you know, clothes. Because why not? I'm gonna keep my car there. I'm gonna walk to school instead of driving. I'm 15. And yeah. I forgot what character name is so I'm gonna call him Isaac and like I he said he's 15 I forgot you know what I mean okay go on the character now let's head to school I guess in Tokyo my first day at Tokyo High School in Japan hell yeah dude so this is Jap Wanda Japan High School, huh? This is my first day at this high school. Nice. Like hell yeah dude. Okay, so school started already. Let's head to class. My first class should be this one here. Good morning class, today we have a new student. Isaac, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Isaac and I'm new here. I was from America but then decided to move to Japan, Tokyo, why not? I'm here so I'm gonna go sit down now. Class dismissed. Cool. My second class is here. Good morning, class. Class dismissed. Cool. My last class into the break it should be down here. Good morning, class. Let's sit down. Class dismissed. Have fun that bike. Cool. It's break time. Nice. Let's head out, I guess. Let's chill here, smoke some weed, and watch YouTube. Why not? Press play. I racked my brain for a few days on how I could possibly approach Dane. I couldn't just directly go to him and ask him out. Moreover, I was afraid that his response would be cold if I just went to him and started talking about the weather. What could 
possibly help me get his attention. And then it struck me. He liked gaming whenever he was free. I'd seen him playing Fortnite. I was going out of my way here, but learning to play Fortnite was the only option in front of me. At least I would have something in common with him then. And so it started, my obsession with becoming a pro gamer. I watched videos to learn the tips and tricks and practice day and night for a month. In the beginning, I sucked, like I was really terrible at it. But slowly, I started getting the hang of it. I started winning. And after two complete months of practice and dedication, I became a pro at it. Now, finally, I could approach Dave. So one day during our lunch break, I asked him if I could sit with him. He nodded absentmindedly. I took a seat in front of him and started talking about games. I saw that you're interested in Fortnite, I said, pointing towards his phone. I recently got into that, too. He looked at me with his eyebrows raised. Really? Are you any good? I shrugged. You can play with me to find that out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I started playing the game with my crush. I was so nervous, I'm not going to lie. I mean, he was obviously better than me since he'd been playing much longer. To be honest, it seemed like he'd been playing all his life. I put all the skills and knowledge I gathered in two months into the game, and I played with him. And let me tell you, the end result was pretty awesome. He was so impressed with my gaming skills. Wow, how long have you been playing? He asked. Um, two months, I replied. You are quite good, he remarked. I mean, better than most of the experienced players out there. I blushed. Really? He nodded. I can bet on it. Thanks, I said with a smile. For the compliment, and also for that one time you helped me. He waved his hands dismissively. You don't have to thank me for that. I'm happy to help. But still, I'd like to treat you to a dinner or something, if you don't mind, I said. Or clingy to Dane. And she didn't really like that I was grabbing his attention now. She invited me to play with her. I'll pass, I told her bluntly. I'd learned gaming only for Dane. Besides, it seemed like Lori's intentions behind playing with me were not so pure. She definitely had some motive behind it. She pouted. That's a shame. Dane told me you're really good at it. Why won't you play with me? Are you afraid that you'll mess up? Did she really go there? I know for certain that she was trying to agitate me, and sadly, it worked. I mean, I could still refuse and walk away, but Dane was there too and watching this whole exchange quietly. I couldn't tell what he was thinking, but I had this weird feeling that he'd be disappointed in me if I passed up on this challenge. So I agreed to play with Lori, and guess what? Of course, I lost to her. She made me look like a fool and a trash player. She was really a pro at this game, and I never stood a chance against her. She started laughing after the game was over. I thought that you were impressive, but what is this? She asked mockingly. First graders do it better than you. Lori, there's no need to insult someone over a game. Dane came to my rescue again, and then he turned to me with an apologetic look. He said with a sigh. I had no idea that she would take it so far. I can't help but feel bad. It's okay. It wasn't your fault, I said. And besides, she's your sister. I guess she was just trying to look out for you or something. After that, we closed Lori's topic and started talking about other things. And when I say other things, I mean much deeper things. Well, in short, he asked me out towards the end, and I said yes. I swear, I felt like I'd have a heart attack when he asked me out. I was finally going steady with the guy that I've been crushing on for so long. It felt like all my hard work and efforts had finally paid off. But of course, this day wasn't over yet. Lori had to come and ruin everything. She walked into the restaurant just as we were about to leave. She spotted us and came over to sit next to Dane. Lori, why are you here? Dane asked in confusion. More importantly, how did you find us? I narrowed my eyes at her. Dane gave me the location, she replied smugly. Yeah, but I didn't know that you were asking so that you could come here, Dane said. What's going on? Lori shrugged. Nothing. I just wanted to have dinner with you. I'm not interrupting anything, right? You so are, I wanted to say, but of course I kept my mouth shut just for Dane's sake. Lori, Dane started. Aaron and I are on a date. You should have called before coming here. Lori's expression was so priceless that it was hilarious. What the heck? You're dating her? Lori asked after picking her jaw up off the floor. Um, yeah, Dane frowned. Why is that so surprising? You have never dated in your life, she exclaimed. 
It was just short-term relationships that didn't even matter. So why are you going out with her all of a sudden? Because I want to, Dame replied. And anyway, it's not something that concerns you. Please don't overreact. Lori's lips trembled and I almost rolled my eyes. So, she's already replaced me, she asked dramatically. What do you want? I see how it is. Why? Like, how okay. come you keep staring at me? She Nothing. Got up and walked then away. go then. Wow. One day, though, I received a DM from Lori. She'd sent me some pictures of herself with Dane. Nothing strange, you think? Well, what if I told you that she was dressed up exactly like me and looked eerily similar to me? Yep, she basically cosplayed as me and went out on a date with Dane over the weekend. Wow, I was speechless. This was a new low, even for her. Not to mention one blurry pic where it looked like they were kissing. I knew she made it blurry on purpose so that I'd lose my mind trying to figure it out. A few minutes later, I received a text from her. I'm sorry, Aaron, but I broke up with your boyfriend on behalf of you. Oh, wait, he actually thought I was you. Man, it was so funny. Anyway, I just thought that I'd tell you. I was numb for a second before my mind started reeling. She did what? I didn't even have the words to curse her now. I tried to text Dane, but his phone was switched off, and I couldn't do anything except wait for the next day. On Monday, I went to the office and walked up to Dane. He was surprised to see me. I didn't waste any time in explaining everything to him and how Lori had impersonated me and broken up with him. He was stunned for a moment before he sighed tiredly. I kind of figured that it was Lori, he said slowly. She's my sister. How could I not? I gaped at him. And... You still played along with her? What else could I do? He threw his hands up in frustration. For the past few weeks, all I've been Yo, doing is fighting with her. Yo, can you fuck off, please? And I felt a lump forming in my throat. I wanted to ask him if he kissed her, too. Despite knowing that it was his sister, but ugh, ugh, I couldn't. The thought was so gross in itself that I started to gag. Dane asked me to forgive him, and I did. Because I really understood how he felt. I'd seen what kind of trouble he was going through because of Lori, and I knew that it was all too exhausting for him. That's why I just forgave him, and we decided to forget about the entire incident, pretend like it never happened. Well, I'd successfully destroyed Lori's attempt to break us up. Dane and I were still a thing, and I was going to make sure that it remained that way. There was only one thing that was eating me up. That freaking kiss. Did they, or did they not do it? I couldn't sleep that night, and a really insane idea popped into my head. I decided to spy on Dane and Lori. I know it sounds crazy and ridiculous, but that's all I could think of. If they made out once, then they were bound to slip up and do it again. At least Lori would definitely do it. I went to where his apartment was. Conveniently, they lived opposite a building that was under construction. I climbed up the steps of that building and reached the top, which was directly parallel to Dane's apartment. I could make out his living room window. I fished out a pair of binoculars from my bag and looked through them. I could see everything clearly. Dane and Lori were cuddling on a couch and watching Netflix. Just great. Here, my whole life has turned into a drama and they were enjoying Netflix. Could this be any more ironic? <laughs> well then, it was confirmed that something really weird was going on between them. The next day at the office, I confronted Dane during a lunch break. I came clean about last night and told him what I'd seen. I knew I was a bad person for spying on him, but he was equally bad because he was sort of cheating on me. He inhaled a sharp breath before meeting my eyes. Yes, you're right. I was cuddling with my sister. What's so wrong about that? I gave him a disgusted look. Are you seriously asking me that? Look, if I have to keep her quiet, I have to do it, okay? He said in frustration. Showing these signs of affection are the only way that she won't bother me. If I said I was shocked, it would be an understatement. But, weirdly enough, I still didn't blame Dane for anything. I saw- Yo, get the fuck away from me. You wake up soon enough, bitch. <sighs> be frantic. Uh, only Lori's fault in it. She had messed with his mind for so many years and she kept doing it. She distorted his thoughts to the point where he couldn't differentiate between right or wrong when it came to her. And this was exactly what Lori wanted. Well, now I knew what I wanted. 
I wasn't going to let Lori off the hook so easy, and I was not going to break up with Dave. I had deep, genuine feelings for him, and I wanted to help him overcome his problems. The biggest problem was Lori. Now I was determined to do something about Lori. From what I gathered, she was attracted to Dane, but she couldn't do anything about it officially because he was her brother. So, what if I removed this obstacle for Lori? What if I found her a replacement, Dane? As in, a guy who would be exactly like Dane, but she could take things forward with him since he wouldn't be her brother. I made profiles on all the social media sites and dating apps under Lori's name. I pretended to be her on these apps and started searching for a guy who was just like Dane. It took me a few days and endless browsing, but I finally found him. I found the perfect guy who could impersonate Dane. When I first saw his pic, I almost mistook him for Dane for a second. He looked so similar to him. His name was Todd, and he lived in a different state. I messaged him, and fortunately, he replied. I got to know a few things about him. For instance, he was an actor. I didn't beat around the bush for long, and I told him what my purpose really was. I told him that I would pay him to seduce and date Lori. Surprisingly enough, he agreed. I guess he needed the money since he rarely got any acting jobs or big roles. So he couldn't really pass up on my offer. I booked him tickets to visit me and met him outside my office two days later. I explained everything to him over coffee and I told him what he had to do. Wow, you are all crazy, he said after I was done telling everything to him. I can't deny that, I said with a sigh. But I am not willing to lose my boyfriend. Whatever, he shrugged. I'm only in this for the money. You better pay me on time. After all, it looks like I'm setting myself up for one crazy girl who's crushing on her freaking brother. Yeah, yeah, I've already made the advance payment, I told him. You can check with your bank. And my plan was put into action after that. Todd accidentally bumped into Lori. And as expected, Lori thought that it was Dane for a brief moment. She was baffled when she got to know that it was someone else. Todd and Lori remained in touch after that, and slowly but steadily, Todd seduced her, and they started going out. Everything was going smoothly, and Lori finally left me and Dane alone. It was so weird that she was dating someone who looked exactly like her brother. Todd told me that she was embarrassed about it and wanted to keep the relationship a secret. Well, guess whose weakness I had found? I could definitely use that against her sometime in the future. I mean, I know that I'd successfully thrown her off and stuff, but how could I forget what she'd done to me in the past? How could I forget that day she cosplayed as me and broke me up with my boyfriend? Heck, how could I forget that she tried to kiss him? Nah, I was not letting Lori off so easily, especially because Todd wasn't a permanent solution. I was paying him to be her boyfriend, and it wasn't worth it. First of all, it was taking up so much of my money, and secondly, Todd just couldn't pretend forever. He had to leave one day, and then Lori would be back to date. And I had to stop her and teach her a lesson before that. I had to make her realize that what she wanted to do with her brother was wrong. And she already knew this, considering how afraid she was about people finding out that she was dating her brother's look-alike. One day, she came to pick up Dane after work. Dane was busy on a phone call, and I happened to be there, so I was basically left alone with Lori. I chose this moment to rile her up. Yo, Lori, I don't hear from you these days, I said with a smile. Everything okay with you? I thought you would do something again after that breakup stunt failed. She rolled her eyes at me. Look, I have better things to do now. So, you admit that what you were doing was not a nice thing, I asked. Did you finally get a hobby? Oh, please, she scoffed. Don't act all high and mighty just because you're dating my brother. I would always have greater hold on him. And for your information, I have a boyfriend now. I gasped. A boyfriend? Did you finally move on from Dane? Who is this secret guy, Lori? She looked around nervously. After all, she'd blown her cover, sort of. You know, I don't really believe you, I said. Just admit it, you're still hung up on Dane. No, she shrieked. Just you wait. Tomorrow, I have a date with my boyfriend. I'll send you our pictures. And she did. She did send me her pictures with Todd the very next day. I was still surprised for a moment about how much he looked like Dane. Well, this was perfect. All I had to do was leak these pictures and expose the secret boyfriend of Lori's. Everyone needed to know that she was actually crushing on her brother so much that she would date his look-alike. I didn't leak the pictures, though. Todd did it for me. 
He posted it on social media and tagged Lori. Now, each one of Lori's colleagues and friends thought that she was dating her brother. I had to come to Dane's defense and clear up everything. I explained in a post that Dane was dating me, but Lori had tried to make a move on him in the past. I attached the photos from the time she cosplayed as me for proof. Everyone was shocked. Needless to say, Lori tried to make up some excuses and lies, but it didn't work this time. Everyone now thought of her as a weirdo who was trying to impersonate her brother's girlfriend. I made my last payment to Todd for his services, and he left. Lori now knew the truth, and despite everything, she still tried to get Dane sympathy. But thankfully, Dane could now see what he'd been doing wrong all along. It was my fault in the first place, he said. I kept giving in to her, and this is how she turned out to be like this. I fed her wishes when I should have clearly told her not to cross the line. I'm glad that you understand that now, I told him. Lori was back on track and trying to ruin my relationship with Dane and make him feel guilty and stuff. But this time, her tricks wouldn't work. Dane didn't even want to be seen with her after everything that had happened. It was going to affect his image, too. No matter how much Lori pleaded this time, Dane refused her. He even moved out of her apartment and asked Lori to figure out her life on her own and keep her distance from him. Well, what can I say? Dane and I have been going strong ever since. And no matter what trick Lori employs now, she is helpless. I honestly pity her for not being able to move on from Dane. Why couldn't she just try to fall in love with some decent guy who is not her brother? I hope she comes to her senses soon and realizes why she was wrong all along. Anyway, this was my story. What do you guys feel about it? Do you think I went too harsh on Lori? If so, that lucky. It, it reminds me of the cool version of Tobey Maguire starting down the street in Spider-Man 3. Like, if he was cool, he wasn't. Sorry, Tobey. I don't know what makes him more lucky, the fact that he missed the falling debris or the fact that he's wearing a hard hat in case he didn't. Most likely the first part, especially considering the size of the crash of the debris. I'd say that would have left him a little worse for wear, even with his trust. Let's pause it. Head to cross, I guess. My first cross for the actual day, it should be, okay, so there's three breaks, okay, my second break cross is this one, good morning cross, okay, so let's sit down here, cross dismissed. Cool. Which my second cross should be this way. No, not that way. Here. Good morning, cross. Cross dismissed. Cool. My dog cross should be down here. Here we are. Good morning, cross. Cross dismissed. Have fun at break. Nice. Let's head down. Here, my dude. And head out in the yard. In the oval. Why not? So, yeah, why not, dude?
I need to find somewhere where there's no people. Because look, look how much people is people are out here. Yo. The smash but get the fuck out, bitch. Go. This is my spot, bitch. Not yours, so get the you fuck out. The only thing that would make this moment even better is if there was like a badass song playing in the background and you just walked away and said, Oh, hey, let's go, boys. Let's go get some lunch. Never mind that. Coming in number seven, we have Too Hot to Handle. Summer is around. With hundreds of productions in store and online, to step into autumn with plenty of shine. Bitch. Fuck off, you wake up to enough, bitch. The world watch these videos, so if you're south of the equator, you might be looking at winter on the horizon, so I'm sorry to brag about it. But when we look forward to hot weather coming around, we want nice, warm sunshine. We want a little bit of a breeze. We might even want some street festivals where we can drink one too many pina coladas, and someone takes a video that will go viral. But what we have here is too much heat coming in too fast. Jet of hot 1,200 degrees Celsius metal passed by a worker just as he turned around. Yeah, there wasn't silly string shooting out at a kid's birthday party. No, what you just saw was liquid metal. And as you know, metal is always solid, unless we're talking about mercury. In order to get metal from its solid state into a liquid state, it has to be insanely hot. Like, so hot that if it touched your skin, it would melt it off faster than a freezy on a barbecue. I have never worked in a plant like that before, so I don't really know what's going on in there. But I don't think molten hot metal blasting all over the floor of the plant wouldn't be a work place violation. Especially when it almost cooks off a guy's leg and then he has to dance away like he just saw a rattlesnake. Coming in at number six, we have a Michael Bay worthy helicopter crash. Ah. Damn, these poor guys just wanted to see a helicopter take off outside of a Michael Bay film, but what they didn't expect was that they were going to get two for one because they also got to see an epic crash. Thankfully, though, these three guys were able to get out of the way, but what is even more lucky, though, is that the cockpit didn't land face down. By the end of the crash, you can see the whole front of the helicopter still remains intact. Though the pilot is definitely shaken like a James Bond martini, you can see them still sitting in the driver's seat. The question remains, who was the luckiest in this video? The three men who got the hell out of Dodge or the man sitting in the cockpit at the end of the ordeal? Coming in number five, we have Iceberg Ahead. I think for this list, I'm going to be touching on all of the most common fears. We have already covered people's fear of heights, and now we're going to get into something that might be even more terrifying, a fear of what could be going on below the surface. Now, this next clip isn't a massive creature that is looming under the surface, but it's how quickly nature can turn against you. So to give you a little bit of a backstory as to what on earth is going on here, we have some people that are doing a polar tour. They're investigating the ice and the polar region. And I know that scientists love this kind of stuff, but I couldn't imagine a worse job. They send you to one of the coldest places on earth. You can literally never get warm again, and then you have to investigate ice, which might be one of the most boring things on the planet. Have a join. You can be bored and cold for years. Yeah, no thank you. Well, as you could see, ice isn't always boring. A massive chunk of ice falls off the ice wall into the water and creates a massive tidal wave. This thing was cruising towards them very fast, and if it had hit them, it would have capsized their boat. Falling to water that cold, there would have been no way they would have been able to make it back alive. Coming in at number four, we have too close to the action. Look, we all want to be too close to the action sometimes. Feel what it's like to get that winning goal, or swim with those sharks, or drift around a corner in an epic race car, which is clearly all this camera guy Fuck wanted. off, can you? Just leave me alone. Stop staring at me, please. All leave me the fuck going, and if you didn't scream too, alone. Get out of the way. It's not about you while watching this, then something is wrong. With you. <laughs> no, Yo. You're, 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 the only other acceptable reaction would have been here in other jaw dropping silence. One thing is for sure, this you're guy was clearly rocky. trying to impress his boss by going all out when it came to getting an epic shot. You can see close to the curve of the road, a cameraman is crouched down, ready to catch a sweet drift, and that he did. Seconds later, not one but 
the two race cars sweep around the corner, narrowly missing him by mere inches. I don't know what's more metal, the cars themselves, or this guy's fast and furious attitude towards his career. Coming in number three, we have nothing but net. Making those insane buzzer beaters are some of the craziest moments in sports, but they don't happen that often. I mean, we all remember when Michael Jordan was able to lock it away against Cleveland with the famous shot. And if you're from Toronto, you remember when Kawhi Leonard was sinking that shot at the end of the first round to send the Raptors into the second round of the playoffs in a run where they would eventually become the NBA champs. But this shot might be even crazier than both of those. Well, it's not, but it's still an amazing shot. Look at that. This kid shot it all the way across the court, and he not only nailed the shot, but he looped it around and got it caught in the net like a bottle flip. The dude has ice in his veins with that shot. The dude who sent this one flying is a stone-cold killer. There's no doubt about it. Someone get the NBA on the phone because I think we just found the guy who needs to take all the halftime court shots to make viral videos for all the people. I mean, he's not actually good enough to play for any of the teams, but it's fun to think that we could contract this guy for the half-court shots at halftime. That's just legendary. And coming in at number two, Top Gun Wannabe. This clip starts out slow, but as soon as you hear that engine driving closer, you know something's about to go down. <laughs> at first, the video appears to be an attempt at capturing a video of their friend biking, driving down the laneway when a plane narrowly misses the woman and her friend. If you didn't move your head out of the way if the plane got closer, you're probably the most hardcore individual on the planet, because I definitely did. You can imagine what would have happened if they hadn't been so lucky. Going by the dust the plane swept up, the speed at which this plane was going would have taken both of these individuals along the ride and not in a good way. Thankfully, this plane seemed to have their gears in check and these two can continue on their mission of being in places they probably shouldn't be. And coming in at the number one spot, Yo, I don't want to pay you back here. Why you should I come? Just fuck off, dude. Got me? Because it seems that it doesn't take long for an animal to learn how to open them. Just fuck off. Please. Those lions probably thought that this was the most convenient food delivery service of all time. You have a car full of ready-to-eat people who just pull up. You open the door and then chow down. Those people were very lucky that they were able to close the door before the lion reached his head inside the car and ripped one of them out. There was a whole group of lions there. There would be no way that they would have been able to save that person from getting eaten alive. All right, guys, that has been our video. Who did you think was the luckiest? Let us know in the comments below. I think the guy on the bridge. The guy on the bridge? Because, like, just... Ooh. The bridge guy does make yeah. like... This is a Smile Direct Club liner. It's how Smile Direct Club gently... What are we the king of Macedonia, the pharaoh of Egypt, the madman of Macedonia, the philosopher king. Today, we are going to talk about one man who could say, I'm great, and mean it. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Fisher. Okay, coming in.